Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. And on this episode, I'm joined by Andrew King of WebSand Solutions. As a Microsoft partner focused on the SMB market, Andrew and his team have been working with clients on a range of the latest Microsoft technology, from the business application suite to Power BI, Office 365, and Azure technology. We cover a range of topics, including what types of solutions are resonating with new and existing clients, the technology his team is investing in learning about, and the types of conversations he's having with Dynamics, Nav, and GP customers these days. Hey, Andrew King, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Jason. Glad to be here. Yeah, always fun to catch up with you, and I know you've uh, stayed really busy since uh, since we've last talked. Uh, a, a few things I wanted to maybe check in with you on and get your perspective on. Um, I know that your your firm has been busy with um, really all kind of all elements of uh, Dynamics GP, Nav, Business Central, um, and uh, and really from what you've told me, um, you know, you're starting to see some interesting momentum with. Uh, with Business Central, I thought maybe we could just start by kind of getting your take on um, on how co- how companies are uh, responding to the uh, the Business Central you know sort of value proposition or the product that they're seeing from you and um, and what your t- what your uh, observations have been so far. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, as you know, we lived through the business edition stuff of 2016, 2017. So it's it's actually a nice. Uh, respite to have Business Central, which is essentially NAV on the cloud, you know, NAV 2018, uh, easily provisioned, easily deployed, not deployed or implemented, but easily set up for customers. And uh, it's really resonating. I think, you know, they, they've done a lot with the user interface. They're working on usability. Um, and, uh, you know, traditionally NAV uh, was 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 implemented as, as a bit of a highly customized beast, if you will, traditionally. And now I think uh, partners even like us are looking more uh, at either implementing industry solutions or we're looking at sort of vanilla out of the box and then piling on IP, uh, intellectual property, and apps on top of that to really bring uh, bring home those industry solutions. In addition, um, as you and I have spoken about in the past, you know, we sell pretty much everything Microsoft except finance and operations. So uh, a lot of D365 sales and Office 365, and what we're finding is that Business Central, as its name uh, implies, is sort of the central piece of the solution now of what we sell. So we're selling a full-blown integrated suite of products to customers, you know, maybe not all implemented at the same time. Uh, might take uh, months or even years to get it all in, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a vision of a fully integrated, fully seamlessly communicating uh, group of systems that, uh, quite frankly, are able to share information and reduce duplicate entry and things like that. And that seems to be really, really resonating quite well in the small to medium-sized business crowd that we target. So uh, we're excited for sure. Uh, that is interesting, and, and in talking to you, I think you know I'd have to say from my own perspective, you have one of the the, the most clear sort of visions of that. I think that's that's out there with a lot of partners in terms of um, that, like you said, the ability to bring in sort of all the Microsoft pr- uh, products that you can kind of put your hands on and and, and use in these solutions. Um, have other uh, have other partners, you know, other sort. Of people on the channel that you know, have they been noticing that? Have you been getting a lot of questions about sort of what it is that you're you're delivering to customers these days? To, are other other partners taking note, you think? Uh, I, I suspect yes. I, I think the interesting thing is that there's a lot of moving parts. You know, even uh, when we re- ended up redoing our homepage and our website, it was around this central theme of all this stuff talking together, right? And even one of the Microsoft people I was demoing to a few weeks back said, you know, that's a that's a really complicated video diagram you have there. And I said, well, you guys built this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you, t- why don't you tell me about some of the, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I was going to say, this is, this is their vision, right? I don't think yeah. it's funny because you know, the Microsoft people I talk to on occasion, they are not even aware of how all these things communicate, you know? And um, when, when we demoed that uh, sort of flow of D365 sales at the epicenter from a sales process, the lead, the opportunity, the customer, uh, all that information flowing into Business Central seamlessly, the office suite tying into, you know, Errol Shanefish does the demo of, you know, I'm logged into my email and it opens my account in Business Central, and that's one piece of it. But, you know, when you tie in OneNote and Flow and Teams and all these things talking, 
Um, quite frankly, it, it takes a lot of work to demo that effectively to people because <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Uh, but it even it takes even more capability from uh, from an implementation partner perspective to uh, be able to sell the licensing, communicate about the licensing, uh, implement it all seamlessly so it talks, staff up so that your staff can talk about both systems. Uh, it's it's quite a bit of work for sure. Uh, yeah, are, are there are there elements of um, of that story that you've been you know, demoing or or de or deploying in, in production scenarios that that you think are the coolest. Maybe a couple that you could one or two that you could highlight here. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, some of the coolest stuff we've recently done uh, is actually artificial intelligence chatbots that talk to this whole uh, thing. Uh, we actually have one live on our website now that uh, answers questions about Business Central and D365 sales and pricing and how things communicate with Office. And then at the end of that process. Uh, you can tell it that, okay, I want to talk to somebody, and it will actually automatically create a lead for us inside our own Dynamics 365 sales uh, environment. So that's been some cool stuff we've done with the Azure Q&A bots and Azure Lewis and, and other things. Um, we've done some really cool Power Apps uh, stuff. Um, one of the applications we did for a distributor of drywall here in Ontario um, is they, their sales folks will go to a store, uh, like they sell it through Rona, Home Depot, and things like that, and they'll go to a store and they'll meet with a the store manager, they'll meet with the department manager, they'll take notes, they're able to, on their mobile phone, pull up sales history from that store, all coming from D365. Uh, they're able to take pictures of the planogram on the wall, and that gets stored uh, through D365 up into SharePoint. And so uh, what used to happen is you used to run around these paper uh, paper sheets, fill it all in, take pictures, go back to the office, download it all, and a week or two later the, the head office would be able to see everything. Well, now it's all instantaneous. So uh, really between Power Apps and some artificial intelligence on chatbots, uh, I think we found some really neat solutions that have resonated with people. Yeah, the the, the – uh... The bot services and is that is that based on like the Azure bot service yeah, offering? Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I did notice I, I was at uh, Summit and and seeing what some of the CRM team stuff uh, maybe along the same lines of what you're planning, um, perhaps you know built out for sort of broader usage. But the idea of rapidly deploying bots was a really interesting one that I saw. Where if you see that certain bottlenecks in your customer service flow or your inbound, you know. I visitor think. flow can be diverted to bots. You deploy it and you take one segment of your incoming, you know, off the table for your human uh, agents, your real people that, that are talking. So they're not answering the same yeah. question over and over. Um, well, that's, it. that's that's where I think the bot can resonate is yeah. when you get these sort of mundane, repeatable questions mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and, you know, we, as you know, our marketing strategy is all about trying to push people to self-serve on videos and our website and things like that. So the bot kind of added yet another dimension to that where we sat around a table and took all of our sales questions that we've pretty much ever gotten in the history of time and threw them into the Q&A uh, spreadsheet and loaded them up into the bot and added some C-sharp programming and some logic to it and uh, – you know, it can pretty much answer any question at varying levels of complexity. So, you know, whether humans will actually use it or not is yet to be seen. It's only been out there about a month or so. Um, but it's another place we can point people to to answer questions. And, you yeah. know, we'll see how that resonates. I think it definitely has a home in customer service and, uh, you know, for call centers and things like that. Uh, and we have some clients definitely interested in that technology uh, down the road. So uh, yeah. some really neat stuff. One of the yeah. interesting things about bots and, and – maybe the contrast from what I had seen versus what you're, you're, you've been exploring is when I saw, you know, a Microsoft presentation of it, my immediate thought was this is for Delta airlines. This is for, you know, <laughs> some massive, uh, and this is for four to 500 companies that have, you know, huge, uh, volumes of huge call volumes coming in, um, where they're trying to take, you know, optimize 500 agents or something, but you're, you're showing this to companies that, um, if they were going to use it, I mean, your your clients are small and mid sized companies, so um, it, I guess you 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 believe that there is a role for this for this tech um, in those kinds of firms. Yeah, I, I definitely believe there's a role. Um, one because I think in in certain circumstances it logically makes sense, but obviously on the other hand, I've had clients ask for it too. So we've done a couple little YouTube videos on some sample bots. I've got a really neat one uh, that I just sent off to a client in New York that is tied to PSA in Dynamics 365. 
and the bot will actually add tasks to a project. It will schedule resources. It will reschedule a project. It will tell you who's available. It is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, why somebody won't just log into a project and look at it? I mean, that's another question, but it is a very quick way for someone who might be on the road and just seeing if someone's available next week to work on something, they can literally just log in and ask the bot. Yeah. Uh, so that's a really neat, uh, neat application. And again, you know, we target small to medium sized companies. So these things have to be affordable and reasonable, uh, and serve usually a very distinct purpose, right? It can't be a very broad based application. So you're right. I mean, I think in Canada here, WestJet, uh, Air Canada launched one. Uh, there are a couple of airlines trying to, you know, enable people to do reservations and stuff. And there are large company applications for it, but uh, I do believe for sure, there's small to medium-sized business applications. Absolutely. Yeah, if I were to think of other use cases similar to maybe what you were describing, it, it would I would think that any any company that has a field service team um, and, and, and you're booking, you know, kind of in 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 that sort of booking, scheduling, and sort of um, you know arrival time or whatever for for a uh, for an aid, or, uh, you know a worker to show up on site somewhere. That customers could almost that seems like something Microsoft should almost offer out of the box with field service. <laughs> we we a field did service one agent, right? Yeah, exactly. We did one for a field service client that has security guards that patrol homes at night, and uh, we built a, a demo. They're actually launching it next year, but uh, this was tied into Dynamics, and it would look up when the guard visited a certain individual's mm -hmm. house. So, because they get tons of questions from customers all day long, did you stop by last night? You know, and you can send the customer an email or a text or things like that. But um, when we piloted the bot with a couple of their customers, they loved it because they could just go in, put their credentials, and actually there's a secret word, and then it would tell them when the guards came by that night or whatever yeah. they want to find out. So yeah, yeah it was really uh, really neat. Yeah, I mean uh, that that is neat, and, and you know, I mean, this field uh, just as a to go off on a bit of a tangent here, field service and resource scheduling, um, I I I I keep seeing those those especially either integrating them with the ERP or just building up those capabilities into a more, something more robust um, or sort of broader reaching um, across Dynamics three sixty five. Just seems like something that is is maybe happening or is bound to happen in a more profound way um i think especially with the resource what is it the uh the the, the sort of the resource allocation capabilities from from field service and project service yeah yeah um well what we ended up doing is you know psa and mm -hmm. uh field service both have their invoicing engines and these nice interfaces and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, the native integration to Business Central ironically didn't have invoices coming down from the CRM side of things down into Business Central. And so the whole thing fell apart because you'd have to figure out a way to get the invoice to the customer and then get to receivables into your accounting system. So we actually ended up publishing an app on AppSource up there today that simply takes the invoice out of D365 sales field service project service and brings it down into Business Central. Uh -huh. And instantly solve the problem <laughs> <laughs> that's not part of the uh well yeah maybe that may or may not be part of their current i guess it wouldn't be part of their current integration because it doesn't touch field service exactly so so yeah that integration ironically it doesn't bring the invoice down the account synchronizes things like that but it, it doesn't bring the invoice down into business central so you can do all your great invoicing and processing up in d365 but then the invoice has no home so we did. A few months back, we published an app up on AppSource. We sell it for nine ninety nine a month, nine dollars and ninety nine cents a month. That is, and uh, yeah, simply gets added into Business Central to pull invoices down that are submitted up in uh, D three sixty five. And uh, from from what you've told me, it sounds like um, you've you've been using Flow just as an all around tool to make a lot of these stories work. A lot of the scenarios, I guess I should say, work. Yeah, we, uh, we start off using Flow to actually add uh, channels in Teams with respect to projects in PSA. And that was, uh, that's part of what we do even in-house today is when we win an opportunity, it creates a channel for us. Um, and then we're able to take all the SharePoint documents that were captured during the sales process from DocuSign, et cetera, and those all get uh, via an automated workflow put into appropriate folders and a folder structure up in SharePoint that the project team can then see and manage in Teams. So uh, okay. we heavily leverage Teams so, so our own so professional services implementation. Okay. And uh, quite frankly, that's how we sell it to other professional services, software companies, consulting 
the, uh, the user experience kind of centers around Teams, even opening uh, Dynamics 365 sales screens in Teams, um, things like that. So uh, Teams has been another really amazing tool uh, that we've leveraged sort of as, as part of that whole sales process when it's playing Business Central or D365 sales. So the team associates a, work, uh, a SharePoint site that has the, the re, that 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 um, accounts related documentation in it. Yeah, right. technically, what happens is in the very beginning of the process, when the um, prospect, the customer prospect, is a is a lead in Dynamics 365 sales, um, you're storing OneNote notes from meetings and things like that, and then uh, when they get qualified to an opportunity, all that stuff follows along, and then. We will send out a proposal or a quote via DocuSign. It gets executed by the customer. It's automatically dropped into SharePoint. At that point, a flow executes and a workflow executes in Dynamics that actually uh, initiates the project in Dynamics. It generates a whole folder structure up in SharePoint uh, and then moves all the contracts into the appropriate folders. So then the project team has visibility to that. At the same time, that team site is created and those SharePoint sites are linked to it. So instantly, nice. the project team has visibility to everything that took place from the very first meeting we had with the prospect all the way through to close it. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, I, I'm, I am also particularly, I think one of the, the, the demos that I've seen in the last few months that had the most impact on me was the, was the plans for Teams and its integration to, it's like the, the, the sort of standard integration they seem to have planned with, with, uh, with sales. Um, and uh, it even gets in, I mean, it goes deep into not just integrating the apps between each other, but how the, how file management, I guess, is going to, like default file management seems to be headed toward Teams, uh, which is yep. pretty interesting. Um, I'm sure the SharePoint approach will, will continue to work uh, without issue, but I, I think that's, that's one of those ones I'm going to really keep my eye on because I think it's going to be pretty compelling when it's released. How it works today is even files that are locally stored in Teams and in a SharePoint location somewhere. Okay. Uh, point. So, uh, yeah, that that'll. I think SharePoint. Yeah, maybe they're sort of obscuring kind of, that from the user interface or something when they. So uh, exactly, they're hiding it all. Um, so it's it's very interesting. And then you know, Power BI plays into that too. We've done a lot of Power BI work with all, all this stuff and, and integrated dashboards. Some coming from sales, some from business control. Mm -hmm. space. You, so Power BI, uh, quite frankly, even when I demo all this stuff. You know, the audience can kind of get lost as to what the heck's going on. So, uh, we even use Power BI kind of to bring it all together. So it's uh, it's a very powerful tool to really demonstrate access to information and business intelligence for sure. So like the dashboard um, capabilities yeah. of Power BI? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and mobile and things like that. But it's you know, it takes a bit of education. You have to understand the data schema of where you're pulling the information for sure. Uh, you know, the out of the box, the uh, content packs that we're getting kind of out of the box are nice, but you really want to get down into the details. Uh, take a professional services organization. You know, they want to look at employee, employee utilization. They want to look at, uh, you know, work in process, deferred revenue, things like that. I mean, Power BI is a fantastic place uh, to show that. And, you know, Microsoft, you can tell in Business Central now, um, various um, uh, content packs, and uh, different data views are being released from the jobs module and things like that. So, uh, yeah, there's some, there's, you can definitely see and read between the tea leaves where Microsoft is headed with all this stuff. Yeah, one of, one of the things that's... Perspective being able to see all this stuff in one place, it's really great. Yeah, you think between, you know, uh, it's almost like try, sometimes with, with demos you can get a little confused about where where you are and what's being pulled in. So and almost maybe it even doesn't matter to an extent, but like the idea with... with what was it with teams you can look at uh, uh like a like a um an account in, in well this is like the future i think i don't think it's production yet but like the idea that you can view an account inside of teams and then inside of that account you can launch the team again to like chat on that account in teams from t from teams like <laughs> and and maybe with you know when you get into power bi dashboards right you can surface power apps within a power bi dashboard you can bring Power BI back into Business Central and, and, and view it from there. Uh, um, and you can also, I don't know about right now, but you can launch flows from within Business Central. You can, I don't know if you can launch and run Power Apps within it yet. I think you can do that with, with finance and operations at this point. I mean, they're really kind of intermingling in, in ways that are, they're really cool, but uh, it can get a little, um, a little confusing to sort of explain. Well, that's, 
spent a lot of time, I find today, and again, this goes back to the opening comments about, you know, we don't really sell business central by itself. I think where it's a big difference from our old, uh, although still thriving GP practice, uh, even division, you know, we don't really today sell ERP by itself. It's a whole suite of products. And when we compete against NetSuite or we compete against Salesforce and Central Force and all that, you know, uh, those systems are heavily integrated. And now we've got something that, okay, it's not as heavily integrated, but I can sure as heck demonstrate like it is and then implement it like it is. Um, you know, Microsoft needs to help us out a little bit on the licensing because you still, as an example, need two different team licenses for D365 sales versus Business Central. So uh, I do think there's a little work to be done there. But um, I will tell you I'm much more um, uh, optimistic about where we are and where we're headed, uh, sure, this year versus last. Absolutely. Um, you know, since you were mentioning Power Apps a little earlier, one of the um, one of the things that, that has definitely come up on that is the idea of um, kind of making Power Apps development into its own kind of practice. If you're as a, as a Microsoft partner, is that something that um, that you see as an opportunity? Just just being a, a Power Apps development house. Uh, as you know, we like to tie everything into our dynamics practice. I mean, mm -hmm. we even have a thriving Office 365 practice, but it's all linked and anchored by Dynamics. So as it for us relates to Dynamics, I've already got two people who split. So we're well down that road, absolutely. And every client, I've got a pretty uh, pretty good artillery of little Power App demo uh, things on my phone that I can show people examples of. Uh, so it, it really resonates with people. Just the quick ability to, to, to transact and do maybe one or two specific things. Um, you know, there's a mobile app for the central, but, you know, I have a, a client yet who's going to process a bunch of invoices on a mobile phone for business central. Um, but access to information and maybe doing one simple thing uh, is definitely is definitely applicable for sure. Our apps is great for that. Excellent. Well, I want to uh... – also, just chat about um, an upcoming webcast you're doing with us, since it is a pretty interesting topic, and it does tie in. Since um, it's it's really related to to well, two things: GP and uh, and and the cloud. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, that event that's coming up, and uh, maybe what some of the uh, what some of the uh, you know trends are around around uh, cloud migration? Sure. Uh, that webinar that you're referring to, I believe, is late in November. Let's see, November 20th, I think, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And it is. Uh, the title is, you know, should you consider moving Dynamics GP to the cloud? And where this is coming from is, you know, Microsoft obviously is trying and has a big push to sell Business Central. It can, a lot of these on-prem customers, both in NAV and GP and SL, over Business Central. I think there's, you know, the Intelligent Edge that they've launched, which uh, ties in some information from these on-prem environments up into Business Central for viewing. Um, so you can kind of read between the tea leaves and see see what's going on there. But when we've been talking to clients, you know, quite frankly, um, changing your ERP system is worse than going to the dentist for 10 root canals. Like nobody really wants to, unless there's a dying need uh, to do it. So, you know, we've definitely had some clients move off GP to Business Central because it is new and shiny and cool. Uh, others are, quite frankly, looking at, at hardware investments and, and like GP are very happy with it. Maybe they've done a bunch of integrations, so the cost to move off of it would be somewhat prohibitive. Uh, and when we tell them that we can, quite frankly, just lift their environment off and take it to our cloud or take it to Azure, uh, there's just this huge sigh of relief, quite frankly, because, like I said, implementing a new ERP is not for the faint of heart. And when you can take what you've got but remove that uh, worry about backups and accessibility and uh, people hacking into your system, et cetera, and get that off your little server sitting on your desk or wherever the heck it was, you put it on our cloud, which we have two data centers here in Canada, or uh, we also uh, leverage Azure as well, both in U.S. and Canada, so we can launch GP on Azure. But uh, that's been a huge sigh of relief. So we figured, you know, let's do a webinar and kind of use, uh, quite frankly, MS Dynamics World to try to get a bit of a, a bigger audience. Excellent. Yeah, we'll link. We'll put a link to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just makes so much sense. The idea that I would imagine any any. GP customer or anyone with a legacy with an on-prem system, I, I guess I should say that 
doesn't have a, a, a great reason to kind of keep those those boxes running in their own data center, they've got to be thinking of, of sort of lifting any of those workloads at this point, um, other than, you know, uh, instead of writing a check for, for more of their own hardware, um, unless you really have that's a it. data center. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. So, um, and we've had it happen literally twice this month already, uh -huh. where I've been talking to on-prem GP customers, and uh, they're interested in, in looking at Business Central, uh, ironically, or they're, or they're talking about NetSuite and things like that, and I simply, they're on our website and they figure it out, or I, in conversation, I mentioned that we're a GP hosting partner, and you literally hear this sigh of relief on the phone, and they're like, can we just do that, please? And I'm like, yeah, of course we can, right? And you get a quote, and I think I had a guy that was last night, actually, sent him the quote at like 9 o'clock at night, and he signed it by 9.10. <laughs> it was like, done. So uh, it's pretty painless, actually, you know, depending. Again, if you've got tons of integrations and stuff, it could take a bit of work. But it's definitely, no matter which way you cut it, it's definitely less painful than migrating to a brand-new ERP. Um, oh, yeah. Now, the time will come, and, you know, I've had this conversation with Microsoft numerous times. The time will come when more people are looking to get off of GP or SL or whatever and move to Business Central, for sure. Uh, I just think that's probably a bit ways out right now. Because, uh, you know, Business Central's new, and, you know, GP's ran on for a very long time. And people, you know, you're talking about retraining your staff and all that stuff. So Yeah, I mean, it's, it's even rare to hear about GP customers who upgrade to the latest version. Most wait and stay a oh, version yeah. back, right? I mean, that's just... A, <laughs> do, for sure. So, yeah. you know, 2018, people are probably just coming out to 2018 now if they needed an upgrade. And 2018 R2, well, they'll be doing this one next year if, at, the, at the earliest in a lot of cases. Sure. One of our clients, a very, very long-time client, told me that she's hoping she retires before they have to get off great plans. <laughs> yeah, it's no joke. I mean, I was at a, I, I, yeah, I was at the uh, the user group summit. Just one anecdote from there: um, a customer who's sort of doing a presentation on their their ERP, um, and one of the questions uh, on their own experience moving to it was actually to finance operations. But one of the questions was, you know, did you have any turnover in your team? It was a twelve-month project, and um, she said, "Oh no, we." We we our our team all stayed. Oh wait, there was that one. There was that one person who, who couldn't take it and and, and left. <laughs> but um, <laughs> exactly. But I guess that's sort of. Uh, I hadn't ever thought to ask that question myself. How many people did you lose during your uh, during your project? Well, but I guess it, it can be stressful and painful. Oh, for sure. And that's the thing too is that you know you look out there to hire new people, and you ask them, "Do you have any experience with Business Central?" And they're like, "What the heck is Business yeah, Central?" Right out for four months. Or Why would you months. even ask, right? I mean... I... Right. And, you know, that's what we compete with every day because you look at people who have QuickBooks. There's, you know, billions of people that have experience with QuickBooks. Um, and Great Plains, too, has that same crowd. So you can go out and hire an accounting staff person uh, who has experience with Great Plains. So, uh, you know, now that being said, if you've got some nav experience out there, for sure, then it translates quite well. Uh, we have a couple clients who are on-prem nav looking to move to Business Central, and that's a fairly benign move. Um, depending on how far back in the upgrade mm -hmm. cycle they are. This happened to be these two clients, I think, are on 2016, so it's not too bad. Um, but, you know, if you go way back in the, in the NAV universe to 2009 and things like that, that can be a big change. So, yeah. Well, my understanding was that Microsoft had, had kind of pushed off uh, providing upgrade tools for NAV to Business Central for a while. That those aren't, are those there yet? I thought I they have were. We, we use configuration packages pretty much for everything. I mean, let's be frank. Microsoft very early on published a GP conversion to Business Central app on App Source. I think it was one That's of the right, first ones. That's right, they did. I mean, it was a spreadsheet of some accounts and contacts. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. It was useless. I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone took that. Let's too be serious. honest. You know, <laughs> too serious. It takes real work. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, and, and you need a real partner who understands. And quite frankly, that's the other thing, too. Uh, you know, we, we understand Great Plains, we understand uh, Business Central quite well, and NAV for that matter. You know, so we can look at both sides and say, you know, guys, um, this is what you're doing in Great Plains today. There's really not a good fit for that in Business Central. Are you really sure you want to do this? Or, you know, if you are, that's fine, but understand here is going to be some pain points, right? Um, and we actually, it was, I think last month, we did two webinars, one called, uh, you know, basically GP versus Business Central right out there, and then another one literally titled is GP Dead. Um, and it was mainly targeted at our, you know, few hundred clients who uh, are concerned about that for sure. Because let's admit it, Microsoft's not marketing much with respect to Great Plains these days, right? How, how much hate mail did you get um, from from titling your your webcast as GP Dead? 
Any angry? <laughs> no, nobody. No? Nobody. Oh, I, you know, I, I like to think of myself as an objective person, and, and, and I think I was very open and honest with – uh, both in, in both of those webinars, quite frankly. Uh, and we had a lot of people, actually, we've gotten some clients, we've gotten some GP clients from, from those two videos, actually, that were launched in August. Um, and, and Business Central, too. Um, so very interesting, actually. I was very careful to, uh, not try to put a salesy type slant on it and just speak the facts. And in, in both, uh, demos, I, I got pretty detailed in both Business Central and GP transactions. Uh, to defend and improve my points for sure. Um, so, you know, and, yeah, and we yeah. sell books, so I don't really care. Well, I, yeah, and I, I, I really, um, I, I really ask that not because I, I, I would expect that you do a, you know, a, a thoughtful, you know, presentation of the information, but in my experience, when you say things that could be perceived as sensitive um, to certain, that we, we do hear about it, certainly, if we, are working with a, a partner who, who has a title of an article or a webcast that's um, that has that kind of uh, you know sort of edge to it. It, it anyway, we just hear we hear, we, are, we always hear from one or two people, but no, not that sure. it not that it yeah. stops uh, it should stop you or me or anyone from you know from coming up with uh, new ways to communicate that those types of topics. But I'm just just curious. Well, it's interesting because to put it in perspective, the GP versus Business Central video has 6,000 views and the Is GP Dead one only has a couple hundred. So huh. um, not sure if that's indicative of anything, but uh, we have – I know we've used that video quite a few times with uh, both existing customers and even one um, – because we'll get about a uh, one GP change of partner a month that comes to us uh-huh. through some – channel and 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 they've come a lot uh, i think we've had two the previous couple months that have come to us because of that video and they just couldn't uh kind of figure out what the future of great planes is right um because like i said microsoft isn't marketing it at all um really at all to be honest yeah so, but there's still a very very strong gp community out there it's still a great product it's solid you know you want it on the cloud you want it local you want it with fries? Not a problem. Um, and you know, I've obviously got a few hundred customers on it, so I have a vested interest in, in you know, its longevity. So, yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest risk is, you know, Microsoft misunderstanding sort of their administrative duty to sort of keep it, you know, at a certain level of health. They, they, I think there's, they're capable of paying so little attention to a product, and I don't think it's personal against GP. I think they're just capable of it, sort of administratively, letting something just wither without them even realizing they've done it um, by shifting incentives too quickly, by sort of taking, yeah, but by, by taking every every uh, too many staff attention away from a product. I mean, it it will. They can risk killing a product that way, um, oh, in, sure. unintentionally. No, and, and I joke with clients today, you know, there's like one person left in Fargo fixing bugs, right? Yeah. Versus the 700 over in Copenhagen working yeah. on Business Central. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, like I mentioned earlier, you're talking about um, a, a system where uh, you're going to find that most uh, people that like it and use it are fairly seasoned account, accounting staff. Um, it, it is, it was built that way. It still resonates that way. It's got a ton of ISV solutions, which enhance the product. Uh, it's a known entity. It talks to, you know, version 2018 talks to Power BI now. I mean, I did a Power BI uh, webinar last month, uh, tied to nothing but Great Plains and showed just a variety of sample Power BI dashboards that our clients have paid us to build for them. And yeah, it's beautiful yeah, stuff. Cool. And I can get the same thing out of Business Central, and I get the same thing out of Great Plains. So if you're looking for reporting, and, and quite frankly, we all know and love Great Plains. Everybody complains about the reporting. Um, but but you could take all that information that's already in your own database and make it gorgeous, quite frankly, in Power BI. So, yeah. and, uh, there, and there's, some, there's yeah. some really cool work being done in, in, in Flow. I, I was looking at um, – I think it was Steve Endo who he he was developing um, sort of new REST uh, RESTful front end APIs for for GP to interact with, you know, <laughs> and doing it in Flow without even writing any code. You know, he's so Very so cool. people are able to pick up pick pick the stuff oh, uh, yeah. the new stuff up and blend it really nicely. I mean, yeah, yeah. and, and um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I think it's uh, it's and, and oh, I know what I was gonna say. The um, 
you know, like you were saying, I mean, the accounting sort of for the sort of accounting heavy um, element of it, it's, it's probably true. But there's just so I mean, there's so much sort of accounting and financial management expertise in that channel. I mean, the idea that Microsoft could even oh. risk losing those people to just by just by not paying attention to them anymore is just such a no, such sure. a terrible idea um, that hopefully they be. sort of get that message and, uh, you know, sort of uh, make make a few amends in that in that regard. Because just that that brain share is, is tremendous. Oh, for sure. Mind I mean, share, you know, mind share. Yet to be seen. Um, but you know, generally when you're dealing with um, with GP customers, I mean, these are pretty smart people, right? And uh, you know, they're going to take a good hard look at Business Central sure. for sure. Uh, and you know, just as they would uh, NetSuite or other solutions. But our real main task, the reason we kind of made the decision to a use a bit of an edgy title in that one webinar. Uh, but B, uh, launched them in the first place was really to get in front of this, these questions that, that, quite frankly, our customers and other GP customers are asking, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to shift gears a bit. I know you, um, you mentioned some, some activity in, uh, in the Canadian um, Microsoft uh, subsidiary or world. You've got some, some events coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually doing a Business Central demo at Tech Summit in uh, Halifax, okay. November 1st. So that's a, that's so a Microsoft that's, uh, hosted yeah, event. Microsoft event. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. So they've uh, they've asked me to go and demo Business Central. It's it's all the same stuff we've kind of talked about, where yeah. you're talking in D365 sales to Business Central and Flow and Teams and OneNote and all that stuff. So it's it's that whole one Microsoft story, if you will, of, of all these things and how they talk. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm excited. It'll be fun. Yeah. And what kind of audience is at that event, do you expect? I think it's more sort of, it's a technical summit, right? So I think it's more of a technical type audience, but it's more IT directors, things like that. So they're mm -hmm. kind of looking for, we'll call it like a level 200 type demo versus just a fluffy little uh, demo that way. So right, right. I think it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be good. Anything else you want to uh, to cover here? Um, no, I mean, the only other thing, a couple of little shameless plugs, I mean, we're doing a Power BI series with Business Central now. We started last month, and this month it's next week. Um, so we're, we're, we're definitely uh, getting heavy, heavy into Power BI for sure and, and trying to kind of show what the realm of the possible is in a meaningful way. Uh, but we're excited. I mean, we're still, you know, we're doing a lot of sales of Business Central and D365 sales, and uh, we're getting into Microsoft 365 and other things. So it's, it's exciting times for sure. And I, I have to say – uh, and I've said this to the team over in Copenhagen, too. I mean, they're starting to fire on all cylinders. This, this vision of all this stuff communicating and one place to go for information and being effective for an enterprise customer as well as a small to medium-sized uh, business is, is really resonating. So I'm excited, I have to say. I mean, I don't drink all the Kool-Aid, but there's some Kool-Aid out there these days. So it's <laughs> and, and, you you know, you're a lover of um, of these kinds of, of, of getting your hands on this sort of technology and building yeah. stuff, right? So, so I can... I can certainly understand. We're having fun with that. For yeah, sure. yeah. Well, uh, this this has been fun, Andrew. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, we'll be seeing you in November uh, online again. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. This has been another episode of the MSDW podcast. My thanks to Andrew King of WebSan for taking the time to speak with me. If you have any comments, please do be in touch. My email is jgumpert at msdynamicsworld.com. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World signing off.